We're going to look today at uh, this being that continually appears to the patriarchs and the men and women in the Tanakh. He goes by several titles. And we're going to just really investigate some scriptures. And it's going to be good, okay? Because we're going to have some really interesting connections. This, this is this week's Torah portion. Ve'eli tolodo yitzach. And these are the generations of Isaac, ben Avraham, son of Abraham. Avraham holid et yitzach. Abraham holid, gave birth to Isaac, and then Toledot is the title for this week's Torah portion. And if you look at these two words, they actually are connected. They're connected. They go to the word, what's that word? Now that's some sloppy Hebrew, yeled. Goes all the way to the word for child, right? All right. Holid, Toledot, the generations. All right? So the name of this Torah portion is Toledot, coming from the first sentence, Va'eli Toledot. Yitzchak. These are generations of Isaac, Ben Avraham's son of Abraham. Okay? So we're going to look at who in this portion appears to Yitzchak, Isaac. We're going to then look at who appears to Abraham. We're going to look at who appears to Yaakov, Jacob. We're going to look at who is the angel of the Lord. And we're going to look at the Toledot, the origin of Moshiach, the Messiah, Yeshua. Okay? Genesis 25, now there was famine in the land beside the previous famine in Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Avimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. And now look, Yahweh appears to who? Isaac. One thing we have to do, family, is we just have to let the literal written word talk to us. When it says Yahweh appeared, and you look at the word for appear, which we're going to do, and it says in a visible form, that's what it means. Okay? Here's what we need to understand. The people in the Bible that were spirit and truth, kingdom men and women, they knew Yeshua as the word of the Lord and the angel of the Lord and Yahweh. They knew him. He was revealing. We're going we're gonna to see that there were stories being told about this one called the angel of the Lord. And then when he appeared to Manoah, when he appeared to Shimshon's parents, they had already heard that if you see this one, you die because of the rumors about him. Okay? So... Yahweh appears to Isaac and says, don't go to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you, where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while. You know, I never saw the connection between this is the same. This is Lech Lecha for Isaac. You want Lech Lecha? Yahweh appears to Abraham and says, Lech Lecha. Come and follow me and go to a place that I'm going to tell you, but you won't know right now. You just got to walk and you'll figure it out. He tells Isaac the same thing right here. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay here for a while. Right? Now, I'll be with you and I will bless you. For to you and your descendants, I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. So what we're seeing right now is Yahweh is literally appearing to. And in your Bible, it probably says this. The Lord right? Anywhere in the King James, New King James, or some translations, most of them will, tr will capitalize the Lord, and that means Yahweh. That's the Lord. That's God, right? So, Yahweh appears. Who appears? And he says, I'll make your descendants as numerous as the stars. Who else got this promise? Abraham. Um... They'll be like the stars in the sky, and I'll give them all these lands. And through your offspring, all the nations on the earth will be blessed because Abraham obeyed me and did everything I required of him, keeping my commands, my decrees, and my instructions. This is how we know that there was Torah before Mount Sinai. You understand? Now, let's look at the Hebrew real quick. Okay. Vayera elav Yahweh. And Yahweh, Vayera Elav, appears to him. Vayomer al 
Tered Mitzrayma. And he says, don't go down to Miz- uh, Egypt. Shkan ba'edrets asher omar elecha. Dwell in the land which I'm going to tell you about. Okay? So the Lord is appearing. And this word here, vayera, everybody say vayera. It's actually the title of a Torah portion, right? That we already passed. This is vayera. And this, this is how the Hebrew language works, right? There's a three-letter root called a shoresh. This is the root, ra'a. Everybody say ra'a. You know what it means? It means to actually appear like you can see it. It's, it's to present oneself, to be seen, to be visible. So Yahweh himself comes visibly to Yitzchak. Now, this letter is what letter? What's the purple letter, all of you Hebrew students? Vav, it's the sixth letter. It means and. Everybody say and. Now, when you add a yod to a word like this, it means he will, vayera, and he will, or he did. It means like it's the thing that's happening. What did he do? He ra'a, he appeared. And so in this right here, we have the word, and he did appear, okay? A phrase in one word. So I wanted to show you that just because I want you to see like God actually appears to people and they see him. So who is this? Who appeared? This is Yahweh. We're going to get to that. But yes, right now, we're just going to take the word. It's Yahweh, right? This is the same Yahweh that appeared to Abraham, his father. And Yahweh tells him that he will confirm the oath that he swore to his father, Abraham. So we're going to encounter, we're going to examine this encounter shortly, the other one, okay? So, so far, Yahweh, the Lord, God, appears to Isaac. Now we're in Genesis 26. So um, from there, he goes to Beersheba. That night, Yahweh appeared to him and said, I am what? God of your father, Abraham. Do not be afraid for I am with you. I'll bless you and increase your number of your descendants for the sake of my servant, Abraham. Now what happens here? Isaac is in Beersheba. The Lord appears to him again and gives him the blessing again. He's just saying, I'm going to bless you. Don't be afraid. And then what does Isaac do? He builds an altar and calls on the name of Yahweh. Yahweh. Okay? And he pitched his tent there and his servants dug a well. So again, the Lord is appearing. It's Yahweh, right? And Isaac, in honor of the Lord, builds an altar and calls, like with his voice, upon the name of who? Yahweh. Now, later in the scripture, it says, this, like, oh, when Moses is there at the bush, and he's like, I did not appear to your fathers as Yahweh, but as El Shaddai. There's a whole thing that you got to get into with that, and we're not going to touch it right now. But the Lord is being called on by name. And people ask us, why do we say Yahweh? Why don't we, why do we actually speak God's name? It's because it's in the Bible. We just follow the Bible. You can be religious and you cannot say it. That's all right. Every patriarch spoke his name. Every one of them knew him and used his name. It's powerful. All right. Call it however you want to pronounce it. Just say his name. Okay. Now, Genesis 28 just building for us slowly. We're going to get into some amazing connections. Now he has a dream and he sees the stairway, right? Right? This is called what? Something ladder. So you have Avraham, you have Yitzhak, and now you have Yaakov. And he has a dream and he sees a stairway resting on the earth and it's top. Look, if you take this word here, do you know what is in, in, in Hebrew? It's who. Is that an olive that spells who? I don't even remember. Anyway, it's the word who. It, right? And he says, it is with his top reaching to the heavens. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And above it stood Yahweh. And he says, 
I am Yahweh, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. And when Yaakov woke up from his sleep, he thought, surely Yahweh's in this place, and I was not aware of it. And he was afraid, and he said, how awesome in this, is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is, what's it called in Hebrew? Bethel, Beit El. This is the gate. This is the portal of heaven, right? So there are four things that are holy. What are they? People places, things, and time. Everybody say four things holy. People, places, things, and time. This is a holy place. There are literally holy places on earth that are actually open heaven portals. Bethel was one. He recognized it. He had a vision. He calls that place Beit El, house of God. Okay? Now in Genesis 32, Jacob, this is fascinating. So far we see the Lord is appearing to these men in a visible form, and he's speaking to them and he's giving them blessings. Now, listen to what happens with Jacob now. Jacob is now left alone, and what does it say? Who wrestled with him? What is this right here in red? A man. A man wrestles with him till daybreak. And when he saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so that the hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. And the man says, let me go because it's daybreak. But Yaakov, Jacob says, I'm not going to let you go unless you bless me. And the man's like, what is your name? Yaakov answered, my name is Jacob. And the man says, your name's not going to be Jacob, Yaakov, any longer, but it's going to be Israel." Because you have struggled with God and with humans and you have overcome. What does the word Yaakov or Jacob mean? It it doesn't, listen, we, we say supplanter, we say deceiver. That's actually not what it means. It's Yaakov, say that. It's hand on hill. His name was called hand on hill because he was born with hand on hill. Okay, Now, when you restrain somebody, you can hold them back, you can supplant. You just have to dig into the Hebrew, but all the English translations that are calling him names that he's not named, his name is hand on heel because he had the hand on the heel and he restrains and holds back, okay? So, his name is changed from the one that holds on from hand on heel, Yaakov. His name is changed now to what? Yisrael, Israel. Yisrael is an amazing word. It means he will be a prince with El. Yisar El. He's a prince with. He will be. He is. Now, here's the thing. We're going to see later. Well, right now in this verse. The man blessed him, and Jacob called that place what? What is Peniel? Face of God. And he says this. I'm naming this place Peniel because what? I saw God face to face and I didn't die. How in the world is this man now the face of God? And it shocks Jacob that he's alive after hanging out with this man because the man is God. It says he's God. Isn't that interesting? You know this man could have been like, Bing. that's why after a while, They were actually wrestling, you know that? Here's what the wrestling match looked like, okay? Um, James Hastings, come here. No, we're not going to wrestle. His name is Hand on Hill. His name is Hand on Hill. What he was doing was this. I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to let you go unless you bless me. He's like, man, get off my heel. Your name definitely hand on heel. I'm changing your name. You can sit down. And they get up. They maybe got another move. And all, all, all the man who's God just, boom, throws him. Now, Yaakov now walks with a limp He's like this. Right? And we're supposed to walk with a limp. That's called halakha. Our walk is different than the world because we're supposed to have our hip in a different place than others. So that's why we have strings. That's why we ain't got none of these. That's why we do stuff different. Our walk looks different because we're sons of Yaakov. We're sons, right? 
and we're sons of Israel. So we walk a little bit different, right? We're, we're, we're royal, aren't we, Emmett? We're royal priesthood. He sees God face. Look, he sees God. It says it's a man. Now he says it's God. How in the world is this possible? So now I color coded this for you, okay? So Jacob called the name of that place Peniel because I saw God face to face. Vikra Yaakov, and Jacob called Shame Hamakom, the name of that place Peniel. Kiraiti Elohim Panim El Panim. Why? Because. I saw God face to face. Everybody say, panim el panim. Face to face. Now, actually, it's plural. Panim el panim is faces to faces. It's interesting that God is called um, the prince of the face. Sar ha panim. And we're going to look at this in Isaiah later. Why? Because God is triune. He is triune in his nature, and he can have a face as a man. He can have a face of an angel. He's at the same time, he's Elohim, and at the same time, he's Yahweh. Okay? So Jacob is wrestling with a man, and then he says, it's God. And then he says, I'm glad I didn't die because I saw God face to face with his face. Isn't that interesting? Who's this man? This is Yeshua. This is the thing that we're going to see. Yeshua is all over the Tanakh family. Yeshua is all over the Tanakh. The Father Yahweh can never come down onto the earth. He sent forth His Son, right? In His name and His authority, they're one. They're Echad. Shema Yisrael Yahweh Elohim Yahweh Echad. So the Lord Yahweh visibly appears to Isaac in this week's Torah portion. Yahweh visits Jacob in a dream, then appears to him as a man that changes his name and blesses him, resulting in Jacob calling this man Elohim. How in the world is this possible? How can Yahweh come to earth and be seen with the eyes? How? Did this same being called Yahweh, did he actually appear to Abraham? Let's see. Genesis 12. Vayera Yahweh el Avram. And it's the same word. And the Lord Yahweh, Yahweh el Avram. And he did appear. So did Yahweh appear to Abraham? Yes. So he appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob saw him as a man and then calls him God. Okay. Genesis 15. Check this out. After these things, the word of Yahweh came to Abram in a vision. And he said, fear not, Avram. I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. Now, you see this right here in the red? This is right here. Hayah devar Yahweh el Avram. And the word of Yahweh came to Abraham. Now, here's what's interesting. If you look at this right here, there's no letter hey before this word. Hadavar. Say Hadavar. Hadavar is the word. Hadavar Yahweh is the word of Yahweh. This does not have the hey. So the way you can say this, and because there's a little connector right there, it's word Yahweh. Say word Yahweh. In the beginning was, the word was, the word was God. The word became flesh. This word in the beginning, listen. In the beginning was Devar Yahweh, word Yahweh. And he was God, and he was with God, and he became flesh. Here's what's interesting. When you study the Greek language, which I'm not as versed in, but I've been studying men that teach me, as far back as beginning is, that's how far back the word is. There are people that believe, and there's scriptures that allude to this, that there was a long time ago there was just a father. 
And at some point, he brought forth his son, right? But the Bible doesn't teach that. Because if you're as far back and you're called father, then that means as far back as far back goes, there's a son or you wouldn't be called father. Just simple. Father and son and Holy Spirit. So this is 15.1. Hayah devar Yahweh el Avram. And the Lord came to Abraham. Abram. And now listen to what Abram says. Abram says, Adonai Yahweh. Now he calls him Adonai Yahweh. He's like, oh Lord Yahweh, what will you give me seeing that I'm childless? Okay. So look, here's the thing. The word of the Lord is in verse 1. Say word of the Lord. And now right here in verse 2, he's calling the word of the Lord Adonai Yahweh, the Lord Yahweh. That means they're the same. Does that make sense? Somehow they're the same. And then, look, right here. Then he says, Ani Yahweh, I am Yahweh. So the one that is Adonai Yahweh is also the one that is the word of the Lord. And we're going to see that that's the same one that was with Jacob called a man. It's really interesting. So let's review. Abraham identifies this one called Word Yahweh as Adonai Yahweh the Lord in verse 2 and verse 8. And then the one called Word Yahweh, the Word of the Lord, the one that is the Word of the Lord, says, oh, by the way, my name's Yahweh. Isn't that interesting? So now watch this. This is the word Elohim. Say Elohim. This is two words. el Haim. say that. Do you know what that means in Hebrew? What is El? God. What is Haim? They. So when you, t this isn't, this is not Christian doctrine. This is ancient, mystical Jewish understanding that was in place way before there was even Christianity, way in, like in the times of the Messiah, the sages of Israel in that generation took the word Elohim, cut it in half, and because they saw several places, this is before the religion called Judaism, okay? They saw places in the scripture where I was showing you, so they said because Elohim is plural in its nature, they actually, the sages, begin to cut that word in half and say one of the ways you can define it is they are God. Elohim, Elohim. Is that interesting? Because they are God. Who's they? The angel of the Lord, Yahweh, the man, the word of the Lord. These are all called Elohim or God. They are God. Shema Israel, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad. Even in some ancient mystical Jewish texts, the debate was over why is God's name in the Shema three times? And the answer was because God is three in one in his nature. Isn't that interesting? I've got teachings on that with the sources. So Abraham now in Genesis 20, we're going to jump to Genesis 20. Abraham's talking about why he asked his wife to be his sister. Remember, there's the discussion going on. And then it says, it came to pass when God, who? God caused me to wander from my father's house. So let's jump back. To, listen, Genesis 12, the Lord appears, right? And we saw that that was Yahweh, right? Now he's retelling the story and he's saying it was God, Yahweh, that told me, Lech Lecha, get up and leave my father's house. Does that make sense so far? All right. He's retelling. Came to pass when God caused me to wander from my father's house. I said to her, this is your kindness that you should do for me in every place where we go. Just say I'm your brother. He's just, he's retelling this story. What's amazing is that this word here, caused to wonder, is third person plural. What does that mean? What does it actually mean? It means, and it came to pass when God caused me, is third person plural, they all caused me to leave. Do you get the Hebrew grammar is not written wrong by Moshe? 
When you see singular and plural in the same verse, it's teaching us the depths of understanding that God is compound and complex in his nature. Everybody say that God is compound and complex in his nature. It's so far out of our understanding that God had a counsel with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Even before they made anything, they existed. Then they made a council of Elohim, which are other God beings, spiritual beings, including the angels, the different categories of angels, and whatever else the Lord has going on that we have no clue of because he's a master builder. You know what I mean? We know about this. What else is there? Who knows? I'm not teaching crazy doctrine. I'm just saying sometimes you imagine stuff, okay? You just stick to the Bible. Isn't that fascinating? Now, this is just one place of hundreds of places in the Scripture where the tenses don't match up, and you don't see it in English. Isn't that cool? Now, look at what Hosea says. I never caught this until this week's study, and I was telling Pastor Scott, I found some cool connection with Hosea that's going to tie some things up for us here. The Lord, and when it's a capital, who is that? Yahweh. The Lord also brings a charge against Judah, and he will punish Jacob according to his ways. According to his deeds, he will recompense him. He took his brother by the heel in the womb. That's why his name's Yaakov. And in his strength, he struggled or wrestled with who? A man? No. Hosea says it's God. Yes, he struggled. Now he's saying, wait a minute, struggle with God. Now he's saying he struggled with the angel and prevailed. He wept and sought favor from him. He found him in Bethel, and there he spoke to us, meaning all of Israel. And he says, the Lord God of hosts, the Lord is his memorial name. Do you understand what's all in that verse right there? Yahweh is speaking. Right? I mean, the Lord brought a charge against Judah, and he's saying he's going to punish Jacob according to his ways. He says that Jacob was wrestling with God, and we saw earlier he was a man and he was God. And then he's saying that that man was an angel. Say angel. The angel of the Lord. And then he says it was the Lord God of hosts. The Lord is his name. So now again, I'm just showing you multiple places where before Yeshua was put into the womb of Mary, there was a being walking the earth that looked like a person. Hands, feet, eyes. They're called theophanies and Christophanies in, in theological circles. All it is is pre-incarnate Yeshua. And he looks like a man. Sometimes he's called an angel. Sometimes it's called the word of the Lord. In this passage, he's called the Lord of hosts. That's like God. Isn't that amazing? Now in verse 2, check this out right here. It calls him Et Elohim. Say Et Elohim. So one of the cool things is about this word Et. It's a direct ob object pointer in the Hebrew. But it also, not according to Christian theology, but according to ancient rabbinic, mystical Jewish text, when you see the Aleph and the Tav connected to certain words, especially the Lord or his name, it's, it's showing you a picture of Yeshua, okay? Because Yeshua is the Aleph and the Tav, okay? Then this one called God is called an angel, and then he's called the Lord of hosts. And it says right here, Yahweh Elohe Hatsevao Yahweh Zekru. Yahweh the Lord of hosts. And then it says, his memorial name is Yahweh. It's the same thing that was told to, Abra to uh, Moses. Amen? Now, this whole scripture here is written in reference to Jacob wrestling a man. And then the man ends up being God that he saw face to face. Isn't that interesting? So how can a man be God? How is that possible? Do you know right now in Israel, 
and around the world. In the same way that there's people coming to the Torah, coming to the Sabbath, dealing with idols of that stuff, you know what I mean? In the same way, these scriptures that I'm showing you are coming to life, coming alive to the Orthodox, and they cannot get away from the literal reading of the text. And there are thousands and thousands in the Jewish community waking up to the fact that Yeshua has been the Messiah, and he's all through the Tanakh, all through the Old Testament. All you have to do is go to the literal reading of the text. And the literal reading of the text shows us there's always been this man. He was an angel. He's the word of the Lord. He's the face of God. He's Yahweh Tzavaot. Isn't that amazing? So in Scripture, we see many angels interacting with humanity. But there's one angel that's a little bit different, okay? He's called the angel of the Lord. He's called the angel of the presence. And he's called the angel or messenger of the covenant. He appears in many important situations in Scripture. The manner in which he's described sets him apart from all the other angels, okay? There are three possibilities to the identity of the angel of the Lord. A mighty angel who acted as a special representative, an agent, this is called agent theology, an apostle or a shaleach of the Lord. Okay, some people just see the angel of the Lord and this man that wrestle with Jacob and all of these appearances, they don't see that as actually being God. They, say, they see that as being a sent one, an agent or a representative that's just coming. It's just a regular angel and he just speaks for God. That's what a lot of people think. The other option, it could be God the Father in a body, okay? Or the reality of the issue of what we think, what I think, is that it's the Son of God taking a body for a short period of time before he was born in his human form, okay? Now, many of you are like, yeah, I know that. I believe that. Well, here's what's going on. There are people out there that are really, really getting a little bit off track and teaching things that are contrary to the Word of God. And what happens And it kind of floats in and gets involved in people's lives. And it's a confusion of what the text is and what the orthodox understanding of the nature of God is. So I'm just coming to bring some clarity to that. Amen? I'm coming to say it's not Catholic to believe in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's biblical understanding of the nature of God. That's what it is. Right? And this is the Shema. We've said that over and over. Now, Check this out, Exodus 33. The Lord, and that's Yahweh, says to Moses, depart and go up from you here, you and the people who you brought out of the land of Egypt, to the land which I swore Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying to your descendants, I'll give it. And listen to what the Lord says. Who's talking? This is what's so amazing. I'm going to start showing you places in the Bible now where Yahweh is talking and you know, there's another Yahweh, there, you're going to see two Yahwehs in the same scriptures. doesn't mean there's two gods. It just means there's a father and the son, and the son is called Yahweh, and the father is called Yahweh. Now, this right here says, the Lord is speaking, and it's Yahweh. And he's talking to, to Moses, and he says, guess what? I'm going to send my angel with you. Okay. And he will drive out. Canaanites, Perizzites, all the ites. This is Exodus 33, 1 and 2. Now jump to Exodus 33, 11. So the Lord spoke to Moses what? As a what? Vadaber Yahweh el Moshe. And Yahweh spoke to Moses. Panim el Panim. We already saw that. Who else was spoken to? Panim el Panim. Yaakov, and Yaakov calls that place Peniel. Why? Because he was wrestling with a man. That man ends up being God. And then he says, I saw God face to face and I didn't die. So the place was called Peniel. It's the same exact person and phrase that's dealing with Moses here. And then it says, Ka'asher yedabar ish el ra'au. Because 
or as a man, this is the word man, speaks with his friend. Isn't that interesting? So Moses actually saw the Lord and was able to speak to him. That's Yeshua family. This isn't, this isn't anything other than the man Yeshua. And the man Yeshua is the same one that's in the Bible in Exodus 19. He's the one giving the commands. He's called Et Elohim, and he speaks, and he gives the commands to the people. Okay? Again, Jacob called the place Peniel because he saw God face to face. Isn't that interesting? So Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they all see Yahweh. Moses see Yahweh. They talk to Yahweh. They see him face to face. He's hanging out. He's like a man. He's called an angel. It's interesting. And then Moses says to the Lord, he says to Yahweh, you say to me, bring up this people, but you haven't told me who's going to go with me. Yet you said, I know you by name and I found grace in my sight. Now, therefore, I pray, Lord, if I found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight and consider this nation as your people. And he said, my presence. Now the Lord is speaking to him. Now the Lord is responding. Moses talking to the Lord. He's like, listen, you told me you're going to send me out. You said you're going to send somebody with me. I need to know who you, who's going with me. Joshua, is it something else? Who is it, right? Please tell me, Lord. I got all these millions of people. I need help. And this is what he says. My presence will go with you. What do you think that is in Hebrew? Panai. My face will go with you. One face now because it's the messenger of the covenant, the angel. Panim is plural. This is singular. This is plural. When it says my presence will go with you, I was expecting the word shekinah or kavod, something else, which is like glory or the presence. It's the word my face is going to go with you. Isn't that amazing? I just think like the literal Bible is the coolest thing you're ever going to read, man. Just read it. Get a concordance. Go on and find one of those apps, right, that you can look into the Hebrew and start investigating these things for yourself, okay? The technology now makes it easy. And he, the Lord, says, so this is what? Exodus 33, this is 12, 14. Now we're jumping to 19. Same area, same conversation, things like, listen, who's going to go with you? I'm going to send my angel, and he's going to be my face. My face is going to go. And it's going to be my presence. And then he, the Lord, says, I myself will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord. And then he says this, but you cannot see my face and live. Wait a minute. How is he going to say you can't see his face when all the other patriarchs already saw his face? Right? Right? Did they see his face? Yes. They said, I saw God face to face. I didn't die. I named the place Peniel because it was face to face. Moses saw him face to face. Now just a little bit longer, a little bit further down. He's like, you really can't see my real face. What in the world? So he tucks him and he has all of his goodness pass by. See, we can't. There's no human that could see the full glory of God. In Scripture, People fall down as dead men, right? But there is a man, a God man, an angel man, an Elohim that is not full glory of the Lord, but comes in the same authority, name, power of the Lord that you can see his face. Who is that? That's Yeshua family. Amen. Praise the Lord. Check this out, Isaiah. Speaking of the angel that was with B'nai Israel all through the journeys, all the way through Bamidbar, all the way, all of the journeys through the book of Numbers, it says this, in all of their affliction, he was afflicted. How? We've spoken of this before. In Exodus, it says, have them make for me a sanctuary so that I can dwell in their midst. In the Hebrew, it says, um, have them make for me a sanctuary so I can live on the inside. 
So anytime, because we actually carry the presence of the Lord, anytime that Israel was afflicted and beaten and shackled, who else was getting beaten and shackled and afflicted? The Lord. That's why Yeshua was able to say, when you do it to the least of these, you've done it to who? Me, because he's a part of us. We're actually literally a part of God. He lives in us and we're in him. Isn't that interesting? And he says this, in all their afflictions, he was afflicted and the angel of his presence. How can an angel save them? In his love and his pity, he what? Redeemed them. How can an angel redeem them? And he bare them and carried them. This right here, when it says the angel of his presence, in Hebrew, v'malach panav hoshiam. This is Yeshua. This is, this is a part of Yeshua's name. This is the word for angel, and this is the word for his face. Isn't that fascinating? Isaiah is even speaking of this one that was traveling with the children of Israel, and he calls them the angel of his face. His face, remember singular now, because the presence was singular, and that's what he told Moses. I'm going to send my face, and now he's called an angel. Isn't that amazing? So Yahweh appeared in a visible form to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's called the angel. This angel is called his face, which is his presence. He spoke face to face with the patriarchs and Moses. He's called the Lord of hosts. He's also called a man. Isn't that amazing? But wait a minute. No one has ever seen God at any time. How can we reconcile all this stuff? Right? Yes, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Yeshua came to give us the visible image of the invisible God. He emptied himself, according to Philippians, of all of his divine prerogatives, of everything who he was in eternity, and he emptied himself to become a man born into a physical body, which is absolutely amazing. And he did all that because of his great love for us. Amen? Now, I've got a few more scriptures. Who visits Hagar? Genesis 16, the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain on the way to Shur. Moreover, the angel of the Lord said to her, I will greatly multiply your descendants so that they will be too many to count. It's the, why is that blessing given to Hagar's child? Because Hagar's child is the son of, and who is, you think that it's not the Lord that has blessed all of these children of Hagar? Ishmael? The Lord actually says, I get, they're going to be blessed. And who is it that's giving the blessing? Malach Yahweh, the angel of the Lord. Now listen, this angel comes to Hagar because she's crying. He's like, listen, I'm going to bless your descendants. Multiply them. And what does she do? She calls on what? The name of the Lord who spoke to her. And she calls the name of the Lord that spoke to her. El Ra'i. God who sees. Isn't that amazing? She gives God a name that we have in the scripture, the God who sees. And then she says, it's amazing because I'm alive after seeing the angel of the Lord who is God. Isn't that fascinating? Again, there's this whole idea of this being that's appearing to people that normally they're thinking they're going to die but they don't die. Now the angel of the Lord said, I brought you up out of Egypt into a land which I've sworn to your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. This is in Judges. And, and as far as you, you shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land. You shall tear down their altars. This is, this is right when Joshua and the children of Israel, they're getting ready to cross over. Joshua 5, they're actually going into the land. This is an address that's going on. The angel of the Lord says, I brought you up out of Egypt. Who is it that's saying this? The angel of the Lord is saying this. But you have not obeyed me. And it says, my covenant. So now this one called the angel of the Lord is referencing back 
to Abraham who came to make covenant with land that Joshua is about to take the people into the land, like the promises are getting ready to be fulfilled. A few chapters later, Joshua 5, they cross over. We're referencing all the way back, and the angel of the Lord is speaking and saying, it's my covenant. Isn't that fascinating? Therefore, I also said, I will not drive them out before you, but they shall be thorns in your side. Their gods will be a snare to you. So it was when the angel of the Lord spoke these words to all the children of Israel. Pause. Did you ever know that this angel actually addressed all of the children of Israel? That means the angel of the Lord wasn't just appearing to certain people at certain times. In Joshua, before they cross over into the land, the angel of the Lord appears and addresses all of the people. Did you know the angel of the Lord just didn't talk to a few people? At this point, he tells the whole community, B'nai Israel, look, it's going to be all right. I'm taking you into the land. I'm the one that promised it to Abraham. You know they saw a man? He looked like a man. Do you know who he looked like? He looked like just like Yeshua. <laughs> That's why Abraham said he already knew him. If we realized how much literal, how literal the Bible is, like they actually already saw Yeshua. That's why they knew him. Kingdom men and women have always known the Messiah. He just had a different name. It's not about Judaism and Christianity. It's about like, we're just following the Bible. And kingdom men and women will know the Messiah. They always did. So the angel of the Lord speaks to all of the children of Israel. And then what happens? They sacrifice to Yahweh. Praise the Lord. This angel speaks as if he is the Lord God of Israel that made the land covenant with Father Abraham. Why? Because that is him. He's the one. Yeshua says what? I and the Father are one. This is so cool. And God sent an angel to Jerusalem to destroy it. And as he was destroying it, I want you to see... This is going to be layered. In this one verse, you're going to see some amazing connections. God, Elohim, sends an angel to Jerusalem to destroy it. So now you have God sending an angel. How many is that? Two. They're one. But right there, he said, God sent the angel. That's two. As he was destroying it, Yahweh, now you got Yahweh, Behold and repents of the evil and talks to the angel. God sends an angel. Now you got Yahweh saying, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold your hand. And now you got the angel of the Lord listening to Yahweh. Do you understand what's happening here? It's fascinating. Elohim sends the angel. The angel's like, we're oh, just killing everybody. Maybe. I don't know. I just think it's amazing. God, Elohim, sends an angel. Then Yahweh's like, hey, angel, hold on a minute. Pause. Now the angel's waiting. And David is seeing the whole thing. And he sees the angel of the Lord standing between heaven and earth, having a sword over Yerushalayim. This is amazing. And David and the elders of Israel who were clothed in sackcloth fell on their face and the Malach Yahweh commanded Gad to prophesy. How can an angel give a prophetic declaration to the prophet to go to the king? Because he's Yahweh himself. God is compound and complex. You think you got this figured out? You, nobody got figured out. That David should go up, set up an altar to Yahweh, in the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite, and David went at the saying of Gad, which he spoke in the name of the Lord. That's just amazing. The angel tells the prophet to talk to the king, and then David receives it as if it's the word of the Lord, because it is. Because the angel is the word of the Lord, as we saw earlier. Verse 27, then you bump down, it's like, the Lord commanded the angel, and he put his sword up. Now you have communication between the Father and the Son. Do you understand how amazing this is? 
This isn't just an angel. This isn't some special angel. When Gabriel come to Daniel, did he speak first person, I am Yahweh? No, he's like, listen, I was in a war. I'm so glad you're praying because the Lord sent me. He didn't say, I sent myself, right? Now we're going to see that this angel can be worshipped. The angel is called God and the Lord, but he's separate from the Lord at the same time. Isn't that interesting? Two Yahwehs in the scripture. There's a book written called Two Powers in Heaven. Has anybody heard of that book? It's a high scholar book. But the guy that wrote it, Alan Segal, took all of these scriptures, and it's a book like this thick. It's called The Two Powers in Heaven. Did I say that the first time? Two Powers in Heaven. It's a fascinating book. But there was a rabbi named Rabbi Akiva. Have you heard of Rabbi Akiva? Rabbi Akiva's rabbi is named Ish Gamzu. Say that. That's a phrase. But this man, Rabbi Akiva's rabbi, and this is in the days near the time of the apostles. This man, Rabbi Akiva's rabbi, studied all of this stuff and studied the Aleph Tav and began to say and write down there's two powers. There's two Yahwehs. This Aleph Tav is teaching us more than a direct object pointer. It's pointing to two divine beings. The other rabbis of that generation told him to burn his work because he was getting into heresy because God is only one and not compound. So the work was destroyed, and then later some of it was found and resurfaced by Shimon Bar Yochai. Okay? This might not mean any of stuff to any of you guys, but I've got the references on this stuff. Amen? So what's interesting is you see two beings called Yahweh, not that there's two Yahwehs. There's one God, but in some passages you see two beings called Yahweh. That's what we were looking at for the last 20 minutes. Now in Isaiah 44 it says this, Thus says Yahweh, the King of Israel, and His Redeemer, who's called what? The Lord of hosts. How many? But they're one. And then the one that says, thus says Yahweh, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, Yahweh of hosts, he says, I am the beginning and the end. What does Yeshua say in the book of the Revelation? I'm the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega. He's actually saying I'm the Aleph Tav, right? When all things are subdued unto him, then he shall, then shall the Son himself be subject unto him that put all things under him that God may be all in all. In Zechariah 14, and Yahweh shall be king over the earth and in that day will be one Yahweh and his name one. That means right now there's some kind of amazing mystery going on and in the future there's going to be a further unification of all of these and we'll be able to understand it a little bit more. Right now it's just read the literal text, sometimes challenges and boggles the mind, doesn't it? How can all this be, that it's a man, that it's an angel, that it's God, that it's God's face, that it's the angel of the Lord, that he forgives sins? Now he's going to be worshipped. The birth of Shimshon. The angel of the Lord appeared to the woman, this is Samson, Shimshon's mom, and says, Behold, now you're barren. You can't have any children, but you will conceive and have a son. The woman comes and tells her husband, saying, Now, look, it's an angel. Who appears to Samson's mom? The angel of the Lord. Now when she goes and tells her husband, she says, it's a man of God. That shouldn't surprise us because all of the scriptures we've already seen. A man of God came to me. His countenance was like an angel of God. What? Because he was. So she goes and get her husband. She's like, honey, this glowing, brilliant, vibrant being. He's a man of God. He looks like an angel. He came to me and said, I'm going to have a son. And now he's like, oh, Lord God, please have the man still be there. So Manoah, Shimshon's dad, prays to Yahweh. He says, oh, Yahweh, my Lord, let the man of God, who's an angel, which you sent, come again to us and teach us what we must do to the child. And now you have the word God. Elohim hearkened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came again to the woman as she sat in the field. 
But Manoah, her husband, wasn't with her. And the woman, now she runs. She's like, hey, the man is back. Come on. So what happens? He comes. The same one appeared to me the other day. Now the angel of the Lord, who she said was a man of God, speaks to Manoah. As though you detain me, I will not eat your bread. And if you offer a burnt offering, you must offer it to Yahweh. You have to offer it to the Lord. For at that time, now the understanding comes, and Manoah knows this isn't it's supposed to be the. He knows that it is the angel of the Lord, not un. It's the in the Hebrew. And Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, what's your name? That when these things come to pass, we may honor you. And the angel of the Lord says, why are you asking me about your, my name? It's a secret. Well, that's weird. So Manoah took a kid with a meat offering and offered it on a rock to who? Yahweh. And the angel did, listen to this, the angel did a miracle, a wondrous sign, an astonishing thing as Manoah and his wife looked on. For it came to pass when the flame come up toward heaven off the altar. So he sacrifices an animal. He's offering it to Yahweh. The fire is... What happened? What happened? The angel of the Lord ascended right in there. And Manoah and his wife were like, oh, my goodness, they fell down. And the angel of the Lord didn't appear anymore. And Manoah knew it was the angel of the Lord. And Manoah said, we're going to die. Why would he think that? This being ascended into a sacrifice and became one with it. That is what Yeshua did on Pesach. He became one. He's the Lamb of God slain. Amen? I just think that's amazing. So it's the angel. It's a man. It's God. It's Yahweh. All in one. Zechariah, then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before who? The angel of the Lord and Satan at his right hand. Now listen, again, I'm showing you two beings called Yahweh in the same text. The Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Why would the Lord not say, I rebuke you? Who talks like that? The Lord says, the Lord rebuke you. What is that all about? The Lord who's chosen Jerusalem, rebuke you. This is the same connection earlier because it was the one that was over Jerusalem. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? And Joshua was clothed in filthy garments and standing before the angel. So one of these is the Lord. And he answered and spoke to those who stood before him saying, take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, see, I've removed your sin. How can that happen? There's an angel removing sin, the Lord. I will clothe you with rich robes. Let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put it on his head. And they put the clothes on him. And the angel of the Lord stood by. Isn't that fascinating? The Lord, and then the Lord, and then the Lord rebuke, says the Lord rebuke you. And it's the Lord speaking. And now we see it's the angel of the Lord also there. And now the angel of the Lord says to Joshua, Thus says Yahweh Tsevaot. Now he is speaking as the Lord of hosts. He didn't say, I'm going to tell you what God wanted me to say. It's back to first person prophecy. So the angel now becomes the Lord of hosts in delivering a prophecy. And he says, if you walk in my ways, who's saying it? The angel. And he's the Lord of hosts. And he's saying, if you walk in my ways and keep my command and judge my house and have charge of my courts, I, the angel, which is the Lord of hosts, will give you places to walk among those who stand here. That is amazing. Now we're going to end it with the angel forgiving sin. In Exodus 3, the angel of the Lord appears to Moses from afar. So who's in the bush? 
Who was in the bush? Who's appearing? It's the word appear. It's visible. Who's there? The angel of the Lord appears to Moses. The bush wasn't burning. Moses goes over there. And when the Lord, now it's called the Lord, saw that he turned aside, now it's saying God called to him from the midst of the bush. In one verse, all of these words are employed. Isn't that amazing? So the angel of the Lord's in the bush, and Yahweh sees that he's going towards the bush, and now the bush talks and he's called Elohim. Isn't that fascinating? God called to him from the bush. Moses, Moses, yes, Lord. He said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face. Why? He didn't want to die. He was afraid to look upon God. He's seeing God there. And then Moses says to God, indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and I say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me. And they say, what is his name? What am I supposed to tell them? And God says to Moses, I am who I am. So now the angel of the Lord is called God because it's the angel of the Lord in the bush. Right or wrong? Who's in the bush? The angel of the Lord. But then it's called God Speaks. And when the voice comes out of the bush, the bush says, Ehia, Esher Ehia. I am that I am. So the one in the bush is called the great I am. And he says, thus say to the children of Israel, Yahweh has sent me. That's fascinating. This is my name and my memorial name forever. Zeshmi Le'olam. Vazeh zikri, zikri ledordor, forever. This is going to be my memorial name. Forever, Yahweh is his name. Now, if Yeshua is not Yahweh, and if Yeshua is not the one in the bush, and if Yeshua is not the man that wrestled with Jacob, and if Yeshua is not the one called the angel of the Lord, and if the angel of the Lord in the bush says, I am who I am, then why does Yeshua say, Truly I say before Abraham was born, what? Ehia, I am. So God, family, is compound and complex in his nature. There are two beings called Yahweh in that text. One's an angel that comes to earth. Um, not in that text, all over the scripture. One's an angel that comes to earth and he looks like a man. He can receive worship and he's called Elohim. And the other Yahweh, you only hear you know what happened when Yeshua was baptized? What happened? A dove lands on him, Holy Spirit. You might not like this. This is the Bible. <laughs> a Holy Spirit lands, right? And a voice comes from heaven. We've seen this three in one for the last hour. I've shown you over and over and over and over. Amen? It's fascinating. And here's one thing I want you to leave, leave you with. In the New Testament, when Yeshua comes out of Mary and he's in a physical form, there is no need to have the angel of the Lord in the Bible anymore. He's not mentioned. Why? Because he's in the human form. He's come to be the Goel, the Redeemer. He's come to be the Moshiach, the Messiah. He's come to die on the cross for us. So he's fulfilling the virgin birth. He's fulfilling Isaiah 9, and he's fulfilling all of the scriptures. And so there's no need for the, for the uh, Lord to have the angel of the Lord because the angel of the Lord's in a physical form called Yeshua. He's the one you can touch, the one with the beard, the one that died and bled for us, the one that was buried and rose three days and three days, three days and three nights later. Amen? Hallelujah.